What's up guys? This is Ronaldo again, back with another uh, Balrox Boxer Basics video. Um, sorry that I didn't put one last week. I know I said I was going to do this on like a weekly basis, but uh, life stuff got in the way, so it happens. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to focus on spacing. As, and uh, I was kind of debating earlier on whether or not I would want to do spacing or combos first, but I just decided to kind of go with this instead and do spacing third. So, um, basically, like, you know, knowing frame data and everything is great, but spacing has a huge factor in that as well. Um, so, like, things that are, you know, like, if something's plus three, um, or sorry, if something's like, let's say like plus one. So this is plus one on block. If I can do it at a distance where the opponent can't do like a, a four frame, then I can punish it with a, you know, a, a better move. Um, it'll whiff basically, so they can't interrupt me with it. And then I can take advantage of that and then whiff punish them with a slower button. Um, so that's just an example of kind of how you can utilize spacing, and I honestly think Balrog is a character who, like, focuses very heavily on spacing with a lot of his stuff. Um, most of the Balrog meta, at least at, like, the lower levels, like, once you get past, like, gold, is spacing. So you always kind of want to be at this, this perfect distance where you're always, like, hitting the opponent square in the face, but they're blo if they block it, they can't punish you. Um, so I'll kind of go a little into detail with this. Um, to start, it's worth doing uh, all of your normals just to get it comfortable with them um, as a beginner. Even if you're not a beginner, uh, you know, people still need to know the spacing on all their normals. And so it's a good exercise to do even if you're experienced and you've never done it before. Um, so what you do to start is, let's see, do I have them set to one to three frame? I'll have to check this. Yeah, okay, so he's set to do a, a three frame. Um, so that's what we can start with. So basically, the way that you do spacing practice to get on tip range is you want to like poke at a distance. Uh, well, first of all, you do what I did just now. You set your Ryu dummy to do a three frame after block and set him to block all. So you want to you wanna try to find the maximum distance and you, it doesn't have to be like maximum distance exactly, but you just want to find a distance where on block you're, you're put at this distance where they can't do anything. So you see how like I'm at such a high distance that even though this is like this move in particular isn't a good example because it pushes back anyway, but um, something like this. Like, see, he just punished me there, but if I do it here, he can't punish me with that attack. In fact, um, there's even one thing we can do with that, with Crouch Hard Kick specifically. Um, you can set him to do Crouch Hard Kick, and we'll get into that. Um, for now, we're just going to go into the the normals, and basically what you want to do with this exercise is set him up like I set him up, and then go back like from full screen, and then walk up, and make sure... Like, you basically just walk up and you do the attack, and you don't want to get hit or have to block his attack. So, it's pretty easy to do with the light punch, as you can see. It has a good distance. But then you have one like this, where if you're too close, then you have to block it. So, you can do something like that. Um, so, yeah, you would want to do this, you know, my, my favorite number of 10 times on each side. Um, just so you can get an idea of the spacing and kind of your your overall distance. Um, do that with all the normals. And then you can start throwing in things like uh, whiff punish traps. So the reason why you want to do stuff like this is that you can do follow up with something like that. So if you can time it right, you can do something like that. And this is actually a frame trap. So... Um, you know, stuff like that, but what people sometimes do when they're spacing is they think you're just gonna like walk in. So, they'll try to do footsies and stuff. Um, so yeah, start with Ryu's three frame and just do that with all your normals. 
um, get the right, you know, get out of the distance and then get back in the distance to kind of simulate yourself in neutral where you're not really sure where you're going to land. Um, and so then you can do that with all your normals. Um, so that's kind of the first step. Um, after you've done that with all of the normals, like that, um, then you can do it, make it a little harder and set him to do uh, his four frame, which is Ryu's longest ranged light that he's got. Um, they actually buffed it recently. So, I think I have it. No, okay, that's that's what I was actually going to test. Okay, so like, like, see, I wasn't at the right distance, so I got hit by that. But, if you can find the right spot, which I usually have the right spot here, just... Yeah, see, it's kind of hard. Ryu's crutch hard kick is not quite as short range as, say, like Akuma's and Ken's. But you can actually space that properly to where on block. Which I'm not sure why I can't get that right now. There's ways to set it up with certain things. So, like, uh... Uh, what was it? No, that doesn't. That doesn't do it. Um. Hmm. There we go. Okay. So that one is a very specific timing. Or very specific spacing, as you can see. With Ryu, specifically. Um. I used to be able to get this like consistently. I don't know why I'm not doing it now. Um, yeah, it seems it seems like you have to get like right down to the. So. I, okay. Yeah, see that's too far. It feels like I'm just going an inch forward. Okay. So that was the distance, like, right, it's very, very specific. Um, but yeah, there is a specific sweet spot on a lot of characters, and you kind of have to practice with each character's crutch hard kick to see, like, how you can, uh, how you can find the right spacing where that will actually whiff so you can make it safe um, and I think yeah so like that's something you can do I guess is get so maybe that will put me at the right spacing no that is definitely not the right spacing Yeah, I don't know. I mostly tested it with Akuma and Ken, so forgive me for being kind of off with that. Yeah. So that's kind of the reason why you want to practice spacing. Is As you can see, I can punish his sweep when he tries to punish my sweep. Just have to get used to the spacing again. But, um, yeah, it is very, very specific. And we're not going to waste a whole lot of time, but if you can get that down, let me try this side. Okay. I want to say that I'm used to practicing it while they're crouching. Yeah, okay. That's That was my problem right there. So I, I didn't even really think about it. Um, so when they're crouching, their hurtbox is actually a little bit wider than when they're standing. 
So you can actually get away with doing this at a farther distance, just ever so slightly. Um, so that's... Yeah, that makes that easier. So if a person is holding down back like this, then you can inch up to them easier and do that. Um, except for, without getting knocked over like I am. Like that. I want to say there's something I can do here. That's not what I tried doing. Hmm, that might be too far. Yeah, if you're at like the perfect tip when they're in this stance, the only thing you can really do is that. Or I think you can do crushing medium kick too. Yeah. So those are like the two follow-ups. Um, so yeah, it's important as well to know spacing as to know what kind of whiff punishes you can do on what. So like in that case, that's the only thing I can do. Um, then if you do... If you can time it right, you can actually do that, but I guess I guess you kind of have to preemptively do it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of why I had the dummy set to that, but what I originally was going to do... Um, Sorry, I got kind of carried away there. And the recording's going to take a little bit. You have to wait till you see that reversal button. There you go. Okay. So yeah, he's doing it. He's doing that. So this move right here, dash straight, is minus four, which means that he Ryu can punish it with his standing light kick. Um. This is also minus four, so you see he got me there. It's very hard to space this one against Ryu's standing light kick, so it's something to practice. Um, but you see there, because I hit on a later active frame, because of spacing, I was actually able to block that from this distance. See, so while it doesn't completely make it so that it whiffs, it still makes it safe. So that's something to account to with spacing. Um, Depending on where your spacing is, sometimes you can hit on later active frames. But you see, I just whip punished him there with that. And the timing is a little... And see, because of the spacing on that, that actually doesn't give as much stun, and so I can't combo that. So I would have to do light kick straight, or uh, light kick low if I wanted to combo that. I was getting it just fine before. Maybe I have to hit a little farther back. That's too far. Hmm. Not sure why I'm failing all of a sudden. I'm going way too slow there. Even mashing it doesn't really seem to give me anything. That is odd. Seems really inconsistent. I mean, you can punish with something like that. Hmm. That is strange. I was punishing it just fine. You can check the tapes, so you all saw it. I'm not sure why I'm having a hard time all of a sudden. I mean, you can do that, I guess, to whiff punish it. Hmm. That is strange. His hurt box should be pulling him back. Um, let me get him out of crouching so I can... Okay. Maybe it had something to do with him going back to crouching, I don't know. Maybe I'm just really bad. Well, there it went. Hmm. That is weird. Even mashing it doesn't really seem to accomplish much. Well, that kind of puts my whiff punishing thing aside. That's... 
I don't know why that's happening. Ryu is standing like it's weird. I'm not gonna pretend like I know how the hitbox works on it. It's possible that it's like a retracting hip hurtbox to the point where you have like a a really tight window to get that. Yeah, that doesn't work. So maybe if he's gonna do that, then that's probably the best option you can get. As for that, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, basically, you want to set him to that. Set him to. Uh, so you want to set him to his standing light kick because that's like his farthest reaching poke. And basically, you just want to do the same thing that I had, that I said you should do uh, the first time, which is go like up, and then go back, and then go up. And if you fail, like I just did there, then you just start the count over. So like one. Two, three, four, like that kind of thing. Um, and then you do, you know, the same thing with like crouching light punch. So like that. And so that kind of gets you familiar with where the right distance is so that you can do stuff like that. Um, I mean, this, like I said, this is a frame trap in and of itself, so you won't really be doing that as much, but it's one of those things where you can bait people out with stuff like this more. Right, I forget about that. Yeah, you have to punish with that. Um, I guess you can do a medium punch straight instead, so that might be, that might be the better alternative. Um, but yeah, and what I'm doing here, I'll show you kind of... So if we take the guard recovery off, I'm still doing the dash straight. So I'm doing, you know, I'm still buffering it. And what happens is it at this distance, this will whiff. It'll only hit if they if they uh, try to react to it. So if I do the same input, it does that. So you see, I'm already pre-buffering the specials at that distance. Um, and that's kind of what you want to be doing in neutral a lot. Jab buffers are also another thing. They're a little harder to do. Because, see, it's easier for them to come out like that. But if you can do them fast enough, then you won't have to worry about that. Um, so we'll go a little bit into kind of what kind of buffers you can do that are the best ones. Um, this one... So you see, um, I mean, as a as a charge character, I'm always holding back, even after. Like, as soon as I finish, I'm instantly back. So you can see how it moves. But basically, if I'm, like, at this distance, and then I'm trying to, like, whiff punish, I can't whiff punish with that, because it's too fast. But if he were to, like, I don't know. If you were to like standing like standing hard kick for some reason or crouching, I think even crouching medium kick works. Um, let me actually test this here. And of course, the recording doesn't register my inputs. There we go. Hopefully that works. Okay. So if he does something like that. Do it right. No. I'm not really sure what exactly I can do it after. Maybe not that one, because it does kind of low profile that. Yeah, you kind of have to experiment and see what normals work with what. Um, let's try his standing hard punch. That for sure, I think, is one that. That for sure, I think, is one that. Ryu's like doing neutral at certain distances, like that. So if I just mash, then that might trade. I might get crush countered. But if I wait, then I can do that. Um. So that's one of the moves that you can do crouching hard punch on. Oh, whoops. 
So yeah, if I space it... Can I do that after that? Stupid charges. It's not getting through. That might not be one. That is, um... So I guess you kind of have to see. And I'm doing it way too early. There you go. Yeah, you have to do it in response. You don't just do it willy-nilly like I was. See? So... But yeah, the idea is you're buffering this beforehand into Screw Smash. That way, if it hits, if you're whiff punishing in neutral, then it'll hit. Otherwise, you're at this distance where it won't hit. So I'm like at this distance. If I don't set him to block anything, or I mean, sorry, if I don't set him to recover with a block after anything, then that'll whiff. See? Um... So that's basically one thing you can try practicing too, is just in neutral, try to whiff things, but pre-buffer into the specials, that way you'll get a good conversion off the fly. Um, because if they overextend, then they'll get hit by it. If they don't overextend, then it just whiffs, and you're usually fine in neutral. Unless the person's watching you like a hawk, and you do have to watch out for that kind of thing. Um, but one thing is doing crouching medium punch after a light punch straight if you can get it on the, the right spacing so if we turn it back to like his uh, three frame for instance uh, I don't know why this isn't working Okay, this three frame is kind of dinky. That might be why. Yeah, that's probably it. Um, you can kind of experiment with what to do there. Um, but yeah, basically all of Balrog's specials can be spaced properly to where they can't get hit by most of the cast. There are exceptions. Characters like Fang can actually reach on a lot of cases. Um, Sakura with her standing light kick, so you have to kind of watch out for those matchups. Um, basically, you can just, if there's any matchup you have in question, you just want to switch to that matchup as the dummy and then, you know, change their, whatever they do on block to see if it, it can get punished at a certain distance. Um, so yeah, after doing the normals, like we tried, um, then you would want to go on to the specials, of course, which is kind of what... I was showing a little bit of. Um, so we're gonna go back to the, the standing light kick. Oh, that was not standing light kick, whoops. I didn't put it in the right order, that's why. Um, so yeah, light punch straight as Balrog is one that you're pretty much gonna wanna know how to get it in space. So you see I get it at that perfect tip to just where the tip of my fist hits his shoulder. And it, he doesn't get hit by it. Um, so you want to do that with the, the light punch straight. And then after you've done that ten times, switch sides, do it again. And of course if you fail at all, like oops I failed, then you restart the counter and you try doing it again. And... I guess against Ryu, yeah, with his standing light kick, that's kind of the only real surefire thing you can do. Uh, crouching medium punch seems to be kind of inconsistent. Um, but yeah, against other characters with more standing four frames and stuff like that, like Balrog, if I were practicing against Balrog, he would probably try doing a standing light punch or a crouching light punch. Um, then crouching medium punch would be better in those cases. Um, so after you do the light punch straight, then you would want to move to the the light kick low, and just a little tip after his. Uh, let me see here. I don't have him set to wake up anything. Okay, good. Um, so if I put him to normal recovery and I do a forward throw, this will put me at the perfect distance. After that, on mid screen. And I still can't really use that. 
I guess I can't even do that. Yeah, Ryu's, Ryu's 4 frame is weird. I'm not gonna pretend like I really practiced enough with him, but I figured it would be a good thing to do. So yeah, I guess basically against Ryu specifically, if he tries doing that, there's not really much you can do to whiff punish it, because it's fast enough. Um, Pre-Ryu pre buff, that probably wasn't the case, I'm guessing. I'm still kind of learning how his standing leg kick works exactly. I just know that it hits really far now. Um, and then after that, you want to try doing his V skill punch. And against Ryu's, against Ryu's four frame, you're pretty much just going to be at this spot where you can block it, like because it has such a long reach. So yeah, if you can practice doing that, getting at the right distance. And then even more, if you want to practice like going through projectiles, then you can do one of these and try to practice where the right distance is for that, which can be a little harder. This is one thing I used to have down, but maybe it's not really as possible with Ryu. I've mostly practiced it on Guile. As you can see here, yeah, it's kind of inconsistent. And you have to kind of time it down to the frame, so. So yeah, it is doable. Um, so that might be something you want to practice too if you want a little more challenge. Um, uh, otherwise, you just go back to this until you get it 10 times consistently. As you can see, I can't really get it 10 times consistently, but um, this right here, when you start at neutral, will put you at the perfect distance to do that. So you can kind of get an idea of where you want to be. Any further back, and it whiffs. So, um, yeah, but anyway, you're kind of wanting to, to, do, to learn how to use that on tip, because Balrog course really relies on his V-Trigger once he gets to a low enough health. Um, he pretty much gets his V-Trigger anyway, but if you want to like speed up matches, it's a really good idea to just start learning how to do that on... Uh, to start learning how to do that on tip, so that uh, they can not punish you, of course. But again, against Ryu, it's kind of hard. I don't know if I would really recommend exactly doing that as much on Ryu, because as you can see, I'm having a hard time with it myself. Um, but yeah, basically you want to do that so you can build B-Meter and get your B-Trigger faster. And then you can do stuff like that. Of course, Ryu's... Yeah, that puts you too far. Um, yeah, you can't really punish Ryu's standing light kick at all with that. But if you know that they're going to attack, you can do something like this. You know, whatever, whatever you decide. Um, so there's meta to that. Um, but yeah, practicing that at the precise distance. And then you can also do the same thing with medium punch straight. Which is a little harder. It's more negative as well, so... Uh, they could potentially punish with uh, like a medium or something, if they have a long enough reach. This won't work against Fang, because Fang's standing medium punch, I believe, is 6 frames or 5 frames. It's something like that. Um... But yeah, that's something to practice too, is getting this on tip. And then, you can do the same thing with with uh, MK Low. Um, and then practice that. Then Heavy Punch Straight is another one. It's, it's like one inch short of full screen. So if you notice full screen, I whiff. But like right about there. 
So one thing I use as an indicator for this is I actually look at the gap between the opponent and the wall. Like where the, the camera wall is, I mean. So that's where you want to use for spacing on this one. Um, and I didn't get it right that time. But yeah, basically like once there's like, I don't know, about like an inch or so away from the wall before he's totally there. Then you can space it right. Um, now this one, I believe, is like negative eight. Is it? No, negative seven. So they could potentially punish with something more challenging. Um, trying to remember what kind of seven frames Ryu has, but you see, I can, I can space it at that right spot. And I still can't punish that really. Outside of like crouching light. Crouching light. Crouching light seems like a, a surefire way to do it. You, know, you don't really get much off of that, but it's still something to kind of check them for. Um, and then you can also do the same thing with he heavy kick low, which again is like a little bit short of full screen. And that is also negative seven. Um, so yeah, basically just practice those. Over and over again. And then you get the idea. Um, and there's also a way to space Screw Smash, but it's very, very hard. Like, I wouldn't even really recommend it's worth doing. Um, there are actually setups that you can do to where you can do it. But yeah, this thing is still like negative, negative 10, so in any case they could just beat you out with like, you know, a crouch heavy kick or something like that. So it's not really worth practicing, but you can still do that. Um, there's still ways to space it out. Um, it's just really hard. There are certain setups you can actually do that will set it up right. Um, I believe, is it in the corner? No. I can't remember. Maybe it's not in the corner. Maybe it's just... Yeah, okay. So that hits meaty and it pushes them back. So that's something you can do if they're standing. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if I can really get anything after that, though. It seems kind of stupid. Yeah. Yeah, you're better off just doing this. Um, after forward throw. Um, so yeah, that's covers that. Um, kind of went a little into whiff punishing, and yeah, like I said, typically that is what you want after the, that whiff punish. Um, for Ryu spe specifically, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'm not sure if that's really the best one to do. This might be the best, or either one of these two. So like if I'm at this distance, then yeah, that would be the best thing to do. I could even get something like this, if I can do it right. No. Nope. Apparently I can't do it right. Hmm. I was getting it just fine before. There we go. You know, you can get something like that. Um, so yeah, you, you can mix up. Um, another thing you can try practicing is in V-Trigger. So, if you space it wrong, these, those will push you back. Um, I believe the Kick Rekka's push back a little more than the Punch Rekka's. It might be about the same. Um, but if you do something like this, Maybe not against Ryu's 4 frame. There was something I remember you being able to do where it's like... Yeah. They might have patched it too. Um, but if you were to do something like a crouching medium punch... Let me see... So we're gonna try doing a medium punch here. Okay. 
So, a lot of times when you do these Rekkas, their kind of reaction is to do that. And I'm almost positive there's a way I can space this raid. So if I do, maybe it was two Rekkas? No. I guess not. Maybe it's on lockdown with Ryu. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if he does something like that, then he can shut you down, I guess. Um, I believe it's Balrog specifically that you can do something like that, where you can game him out with the spacing on that. Uh, so that might be something to practice against Balrog specifically and other short, shorter range punch characters. Um, I just want to see what happens if we do this. So yeah, sometimes people see, they try to do a 3 frame after that. Um, that is something that I see Balrogs do, they'll try to do light punches too. Um, that's basically how you can game them, is if they do the lights. So if I can time that right, like see I can get something like that. And then I'm in, I'm in the corner, he's basically dead at that point. Um, so yeah, that's one thing you can kind of game people with with the Rekkas. Only if they try to retaliate with, with lights. It's, it's kind of one of those things where you have to kind of catch them sleeping. You have to kind of catch them saying, oh this is a negative 2 move so I must want to do a 3 frame to beat him out. Or a 4 frame. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a little... I would honestly call it a gimmick with Balrog that you can do. Um, alternatively, if you know they're going to mash again, I said it's risky. But if you can get the timing for this. Then you can do something like that. Um, basically, a delayed V-Skill punch will beat out the move. But you have to kind of time it right. And it's, the timing is different for the punch, and it's a little tighter. It's easier to do it after the kick. Um. So yeah, you see. It's still doable. You could even do something like this. Oh, messed that up. And that does some good damage off of two bars, um, off of that punish. So you have options after that. Um, again, it all comes with a degree of risk. I think Balrog, at his core, does take a lot of risks. Um, I mean, you look at Smug, he does play a pretty risky Balrog. A lot of them are calculated risks, but they're still risks. Um, like doing this kind of thing. Like that's something that, that Smug loves doing, is just walking in and doing that. Because see, if he does it right, then he can get something like that, because of the spacing. So yeah, um, it does have some degree of risk though, because if they use a longer range move, or if they, if they like, you know, if I, if I do this, and then he blocks it, and then I do it again, the opponent could potentially whiff punish me, so it's, it's one of those things where you just have to kind of catch your opponent off guard with things like that. Um, back to spacing though, uh, there's not a whole lot more. Um, this is negative, I believe it's negative two, yeah, so this is just safe on in general. So you don't have to worry about spacing that. Um, this is plus, so you can do something like uh, that, but that, that'll trade. You can still, if they're dumb enough to attack with a 3 frame, you can still do something like that. You just have to be really quick to the draw, um, otherwise you can do fake frame traps. And we'll go into frame traps on a later date, um, I believe. But for now, yeah, that's pretty much it on spacing. Um, I, guess sh I guess I can go into shimmies too. Um, one more. So, sh we can go into shimmies. 
So it's kind of hard to simulate shimmies in training. Um, the easiest way is to just set them to grab after block, but that only covers if you're doing tick throw setups. So we'll go a bit into that. Um, so I will, rec what we're gonna do is we're gonna record him to try to grab. And of course it doesn't register. This is like a recurring thing. And that still didn't register. Has to say reversal. Did it too slow then. Okay, there we go. And there's a punch in there, but it'll probably still count. So yeah. So basically one thing that a lot of people do, and uh, you know, Balrog included, are tick throws. And if you're not familiar with a tick throw, it's basically you're going up to the opponent at a close range like this, you're making them block, and then you're you're in their face for a throw still. So it's like this. And that that beats out three frames. So if I set him to do a three frame on block. So if I set him to do that. Like you see that that interrupts his three frames. So he's forced to make a decision there. He's forced to either grab, he's forced to neutral jump, uh, other things like that. Now, I will show you something that you can do if they try to neutral jump. Um, hopefully that counted. It should. No, that wasn't the right one. Oh. Okay. So, if I try to tick throw them, I can just do that. So, like, why would they jump? You know, it's one of those things, it's really stupid, and I kind of wish they would patch it, but I can see that the necessi necessity for that. And so you can do something like this. Oh, I messed that up. So you can do something like this. Yeah, oh, my bad. And now you're on the other side of them. So you can mix them up. All because they chose to jump to try to get out of your grab. Um, so yeah, one of the answers to grabbing does not really work. Uh, Backdashing is another thing you can do to get out of grabs. Um, it makes you invincible. So I'm going to see if it'll even let me do a backdash after this. Okay, so it said reversal. I did a reversal backdash. You saw it here. So yeah, so he's doing a grab there. Or I mean a, a backdash, sorry. So yeah, after that, that's pretty much something that he can't that can't be fixed. But if you do something like that, then you can catch him. And then you can go in for like a reset. Um I believe There are ways to catch him before they Yeah, see there's there's ways to catch him before they get a reset, but the, the frame window is kinda tight. You'd have to do something like that. Or you could do, I guess you could do standing medium punch. So that's that's one thing you can do. Um, basically anything that's five frames or less, you'd have to do. So it's a, a, like a, a zero frame window. Um, so yeah, if you're up close for tick throws, like standing medium punch is actually pretty good because it's five frames. Throws are also five frames, so what that means is that you're creating the exact same window for both of these, so it creates a 50-50 uh, a mix-up that they have to kind of commit to. So you can either do that, um, so yeah, but if they try grabbing to tech the throw, they are then committing to that, so it'll do that. So you can do a couple of things. You you can do this strategy. See? So that'll actually hit. So you can do something like that if they try throwing, because that's five frames, like I said. Or you can do this. And you see how much damage I got just off of him guessing wrong with a grab. Um, that is pretty much what the like higher up meta is at this point is shimmies like it's just stupid how much damage you can get off of it for people committing um it's all just kind of 50 50s and knowing your opponent and you know making the right reads but that's pretty much what it is so say you can do something like that um 
And here's a little tip. After someone has whiffed a grab, they are like 50% less likely to do another grab after that. So that's why you can do something like this. And they are more than likely not going to whiff that grab. Or they're not going to commit to that grab. They're going to just block. Because they're afraid at that point. It's like a, you know, a stimulus thing. It didn't work the first time, so it's not going to work the second time. Um, sort of thing. Now, if they're really conscious and aware of this, then they probably will still grab you anyway. Um, but, yeah. You can also do something like this. If you are like a sliver away from V-Trigger, that would probably be the best thing to do. Um, so you can like... You can do that. And that also puts you into the same situation. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Where you can do that. Or you can do another tick throw. So I can do like this. Oh, my bad. Okay, we'll do this again. Uh, so. And that actually puts you at the proper distance. If they're going to be stupid enough, that you can just keep looping that. Um, otherwise... Of that um so yeah that's pretty much the shimmy game um Barak has a few that he can do it after this one you kind of have to walk a little forward um but yeah you can still shimmy after that one so basically what you want to practice doing is just doing that that's pretty much your introduction into shimmies and that's the main situations where they're going to do it um you can also do setups on a hit, but that's harder for to make the AI do. Um, like, you can do a shimmy after a V-Skill Punch if you hit him in the right spot on hit. Um, so yeah, this is a real shimmy to where that you could tick through. Um, that's not. This is. So you can actually do this. So you can do something like that. Um, it's all about conditioning, so you, you kind of want... To make sure that they are the type that will throw it. So if you see them throw escape enough times, then you can trip trip them up, and then start doing that. Some people are trained not to fear grabs at all, and they will just take the grab every single time. Um, so yeah, you gotta watch out for those people too. But yeah, basically just practice doing this kind of thing. I would say do the whole you know ten times on each side thing for this. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a couple of things you can do. You can do that. Um, you can even do something like this, you know, um, that's definitely an easier thing to do than Crash Hard Punch. Crash Hard Punch is a lot more specific, but you can still get it. Um, against characters like Bison who have longer grab reaches, it might be worth practicing that against them specifically and seeing kind of what the distance is. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's basically all you, all you do is you just practice that. Um, there's various things, depending on what, you know, how you feel comfortable with. You can do something like that. Be back in their face. Um, a lot of things. Uh, what's another one? So yeah, this one. can't really do with that. Um, if they're really dumb enough to do something like that, I mean... And I guess that doesn't really work. I know that sometimes people will block that and they will like let you go up and do something like that. Um, so that's something you can practice too. Um, Oh yeah, that's another one. This one isn't real. Um, if you're at the wrong distance. So I can do like... That one is actually pretty easy to... Shimmy with. That's another one that you can do. Um, meaty standing medium punch. You can do a tick throw after. So... 
Let me put his recovery to back recovery. Oh, messed that up. This is what I was talking about in one of my previous videos, how that's inconsistent against certain characters. I was doing it just fine before. Um, we'll just do it like this. Actually, no, we're not going to do it like that, because I can't. If you can micro walk it perfectly, there's a way to do that, and you can uh, get a grab in. But it's kind of, kind of tricky. Um, so if we do something like, yeah, I guess if you just stand still, that actually keeps you at the right distance. Let me try that. No, I guess that doesn't put me at the right distance. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's basically another element of spacing that you can work on is shimmying. And if you can shimmy really well, then you can pretty much take out a huge chunk of health as you saw, just from one person guessing wrong once. So. That's about all I got for uh, spacing. Um, be sure to let me know if there's anything you want me to cover in the future. Um, otherwise, frame traps, so you can expect that in a week. Um, and that should be about it. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope you learned something. And uh, that's all, see ya.